Hello and welcome everyone. So, I'll be explaining you problem A and B of uh, code forces round 698 div 2. Now, this problem, problem A, is actually a very easy one because what you all actually have to do is just count, just find the maximum frequency of some element which is occurring the maximum number of times. That's That's exactly what you have to do because if you read the statements, you will know that you just have to find out for any color. Okay, look, uh, I've got n balls with number 1, 2, up to n, and they're written on it, and they're also sorted with their color ID. And you have to, uh, for, for any color, now numbers on balls uh, will form a strictly increasing sequence. And if, if uh, the ball uh, with this chosen color and discard all other balls. Now, note that a sequence, okay, a sequence with length uh, at most one is considered as a strictly increasing sequence. So, you just have to determine the minimum number of colors. And uh, the most efficient way is actually that's exactly what I told you. You just have to find out the frequency. Uh, of each and every value that occurs you can see that the constraint at the constraint uh, option at the end is also very less so you can easily do a, um, a frequency okay count the frequency of each and every value and find out which is the maximum one that is going to be the answer and that is going to be your minimum number of colors that you can use because you have to find like what strictly increasing colors right so you need uh, increasing sequence so you need definitely you need the maximum number of the value which is coming the maximum number of times you will uh, try to differ that color right so that's exactly what you have to do here and that's that is actually the answer I'm not showing the code because it is quite easy very easy to implement just try to find out the frequency of each and every element and within that also try to find out the maximum one now Problem B is quite interesting. This is uh, quite interesting. So, in this problem, we're told that um, it's called what? Nizar and lucky number. Okay. So, in this problem, we're told that Nizar's favorite digit among. So, Nizar has like uh, favorite digit is from 1 to, 1 to n. Like any of the numbers can come in D. Okay. So, D will be constraint of D would be from 1 to 9 actually then he calls a positive integer lucky if D occurs at least once in its decimal representation now what does this mean by this statement I'll show you let's say Nazar's favorite digit is uh, let's say Nazar's favorite digit is 9 okay so if his favorite digit is 9 then any number which occurs at least uh, which which has at least this digit 9 is considered to be a special number okay uh, or maybe yeah the special number let's say like this could be one number and this could be number that number or maybe 1 2 4 9 2 okay so these sort of numbers, as so if his digit, if his favorite digit is one, then this could be one number, and this could be one number, right? So that's how you're gonna be dealing with these sort of numbers are gonna be called a special number, okay? And uh, so that's how they just said that this uh, actually that at least one time if it occurs at least one times in the decimal representation of that big number then it is going to be considered as a fav uh, like what lucky number okay lucky number and then you're going to be given q integers here the q integers and Nezer would like to know if uh, if this number now what you have to do is you're going to be given Q integers, okay. You could say as a Q queries, and in each of the query, you're going to be given these uh, this Q numbers, okay. And for each number, you're going to have to answer yes or no whether uh, this uh, given query number, okay, each time given query number can be equal to several one or more. 
lucky numbers, which means is it possible to make the given query number as the sum of one or more lucky numbers, which means let's say uh, let's take the example here um, let's say here I'm given 24 25 and 27 right now let's take this number. let's say I've got what 24 okay now 24 and so what I have to do is I have to somehow find a sequence of additional uh, a sequence of addition of, of those numbers which are lucky and also I am given what I'm given the D so here initially in this test case his favorite digit is 7 so I have to somehow okay find some numbers here so that I uh, so that all of them are lucky numbers which means in this case as here D is 7 all of these numbers contains at least one digit which is 7 so how can we do that uh, how, how is this actually possible let's see so they have like described it if I let's say 17 plus 7 is equal to 24 so one way one possible way is what 17 plus 7 right so there can be one way which you can do in brute force, but it's going to take a lot of time. So we need to uh, we need to go for a more efficient and optimal approach here. How you can do this? Like you have to determine for each and every number. That's a pretty big uh, job if you want to do it in a brute force manner. Now you have to do and you have to try to understand how you can uh, like efficiently do this or optimally do this now uh, we we can actually start it from and if you slightly uh, observe this you, you you might get an observation like this uh, such that for each and, and every number right for each and every number that we're going to be getting from the query what we're going to be doing is let's say that number that given number is x okay now what we have to do we have to find out the summation of the lucky numbers right now we know that our d we are also going to be given d right now what we are actually being said we are actually being said that okay the numbers that are going to be in the additional operation they will have at least this digit d now what i thought is okay let's try to find out from the root which means let's try to find out what are the smallest what is the uh, let me ask you a question what is the smallest uh, lucky number it is actually d right so i actually thought maybe let's do something like this let's just make how many d's require to get this x okay how many is required to get this x? How can we find it? We can find it by dividing with d, right? When I divide x with d, divide x by d, I will try. I will, and also I have to. Uh, uh, one thing I ha also have to measure is, uh, it it might happen that it is not always divisible by d. So if it's not all, uh, always divisible by d, I also have to add one extra modular number, right? Which is not gonna be D so it's obvious so I thought that yes maybe th that there could be a chance that I can do this which is uh, for each and every number that I'm taking I'm going to find out what is the smallest uh, which means how many D's require to get this X how many D's and some additional which is less than which is between this and this right which is exactly what I mean by is one is one is x by d and x by d means let's say some count which means uh, this uh, this count type um, d and also one this number right this does make sense 
I will show you an ex with an example. You will understand more. This is let's take the previous example that we took, which was 24. Now here, look, we got what 24, and we are given our special digit as seven. Now, what I said that okay, I'll start from the root. I will try to find out how many sevens require sevens and some additional integers required to make this 24. What I did was, okay, let's divide it by 7. What actually happens when I divide um, 24 by 7? Now, you know that, okay, 3 times 7, we know it's 21, right? Now, what is the mod value here? It's 3. And what is the result value? It's 3. So, what does it mean? It does mean that 24 is equal to 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 3, right? That's exactly what we did. That's just basic mathematical observation to find out how many numbers required to get this one. Or if it is not divisible by that, how many still requires by getting this part, right? The unfinished modular value here, which is not equal to 0. That's going to be the last part now. Then what I did was, okay, now, as I have actually figured out the longest possible addition, uh, which is going to give me the final answer, now, to reduce this number, to make this number our lucky number, what we did was, okay, let's do this. Let's just make some addition from here. Try to do this, right? Like, what I, what I did was, okay, first, uh, just, what we actually have to do, we have every single, uh, apart from this number, okay, apart from that number, which, we, uh, let's say we have got one here, the modulo value is not divisible by uh, the D, okay, uh, the value is not divisible by D, okay, and that's exactly what is left, right? Apart from that, each and every number is already what? A lucky number. So what we have to do is try to make this number lucky, as lucky as possible, by adding like this. Okay? By adding like what? Like this. Now, what can the possible number be? The next possible number can be 7 plus 3. What is it? 10. Is 10 a lucky number? No, it's not. If 10 is not a lucky number, okay, I'll just... <sighs> Finish it quickly. Let's say 24. We've got 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 3. So this part becomes 10, right? 10 is not lucky. Then go for it. 10 plus 7 is 17. Okay? Now 17 is lucky. Okay? According to the definition. Now what? Now we just got it. We just just transform this modulo, extra modulo here to, to the lucky number. And that's exactly how we're going to be doing. Now, here's a fun part. You, wouldn't, you, will, you will not going to be doing like this, right? Each time you're going to be adding, you just can't do this. You, if you do this, it, it might get TLE. What you have to do is, you, you know the count, right? So each time you, you, you will just multiply it by, which means, uh, let's say, for, for the first time, I will just try to... Okay, I think it's going to work. Okay, sorry. Um, so what you have, you're going to be just doing, it, you'll just do is just try to do this operation. I actually did this operation using, you know, each time just multiplying that by 3. But I mean multiplying that by the extra modulo and just checking whether it is possible. Because this number won't be that much which can lead up uh, which can be inside the uh, required time limit. So I hope you made you understand. Let's take you to the code part here. So this is the code part. Okay. What we took here is T and then Q and D. These are the values and for each value, this is actually I'm take, uh, taking care of the initial. If the initial value is already less than uh, the lucky, the smallest lucky number, then it's definitely no otherwise how many of the smallest lucky number required 
all uh, this and these two lines actually referring to that portion that I uh, earlier that I explained to you that how many of the smallest numbers required to, smallest lucky numbers and some extra additional modulo values to make the value here okay the required value and then each and every time just checking out whether p plus i times d I'm actually doing uh, the the multiplicational operation okay just for the um, you know okay so um, so this is the this is the operation this uh, this operation I actually explained you where I did this okay so and after that I'm just checking whether this condition becomes true or false if it is true then I have finally found out a way to make that modular value a lucky number right that's exactly how I'm I actually did and then if it's true then yes otherwise it's not I hope I made you understand that here actually this solve function is just keep tracking of whether whether I am whether it is a lucky number or not that's it and it is actually why I'm divide it is this modulo is actually modulo by 10 if you module a number by 10 you will get the last digit uh, and each and every time I'm dividing it by 10 we, by actually checking each and every digit whether there is at least one D or not if it is possible then it return it true because I have just found out what is the lucky I've just made it a lucky number that this is a lucky number otherwise it's just false so that's it uh, that's it then so till next time goodbye